Welcome back to the Sideline Sorcerers. We are now on the week 13 of the NFL. Before we get into our picks and predictions for the week, we want to just touch on a couple things that happened last week. I want to say I thoroughly enjoyed that snow game on Thursday. I love when the elements play such a role in the game. And that game went from perfect conditions to absolutely the worst conditions within a matter of minutes. And I found it highly entertaining. Maybe it's just because both of my bets hit for the game, but also, I mean, it's just, it's fun to watch some snow absolutely pile down. No, dude, those are always the best games to watch. Got watching the players slip and slide all over mm-hmm. the field. It's just lovely. Yeah, no, and yeah, it was a good game on top of that, even if the weather was not so bad. But in terms of our picks, I had a very bipolar week starting off really well and falling off, ending with a seven and six record ultimately contributing to my 110 and 69 record for the year. You had a slightly better week at eight and five for a 111 and 68 total record, taking the lead. Wow. It's tight. It's, it's tight, so tight, man. bro. I mean, we've been tied for like three or four straight weeks now. So this is, I mean, it's probably going to become tied again next week, you know, just kind of happens that way yeah. for us. Yeah, we will see. It's, you know, it's pretty tight in that regard but but we've got we a full slate of 16 games again i know not no more 13 buys. Yeah. i don't think there are any more buys at all which is very exciting so definitely some more room to kind of move up and down we didn't touch on you know the fancy matchup last weekend i don't know if you saw what uh, had transpired on our little sleeper fantasy league but you know i, I don't know if uh, it should be mentioned or not but <laughs> i mean how i lost and got absolutely pounded by you I mean, I don't remember the final score or anything like that, but <laughs> yeah, I knew I was going to lose, bro. My team has regressed immensely. I started off like, yeah, what eight and zero or seven. You're and on a little then... bit of a skid right now, dude. You've lost like three in a row. I know, dude. It's so brutal. My team is just, uh, I don't know, dumpster diving. Well, in our other league, you got to actually set your roster. There are a couple inactives that you played out. Well, that one, all right, that one doesn't even count. No one's like even monitoring that league. There's no buy in, <laughs> no true winner, and I'll probably right. still make the playoffs. Yeah, no, I actually looked at the calculations today, and you have a 87.68% chance to make the playoffs in that league. Wow, that's pretty solid for someone who's not really setting their lineup. Yeah, Although it, I, my lineup looks locked in for this coming week, no inactives at all. Yeah, I mean, without any buys, I think you'll be all right. But yeah, you still, yeah, you're going to clinch playoffs another one here soon. You just had a little bit of a late season skid. Yeah, I'll probably drop to like the sixth seed, though, which is not ideal. I should have done the worst seed. There's no buys, which I'm starting to regret a little bit now as someone who might be the one seed. (laughs) I kind of would like a buy, but I opted for that eight team playoff format. So yeah, we'll have to roll with it. But. Recapping our best bets, I think I ended up going 15 and 15, so I lost a couple units on the week. Very sad, very unfortunate. A couple tough breaks. Those Notre Dame under is just not hitting, at least not this week. Last week with Virginia, they hit, but this week mm-hmm. Notre Dame has just been putting up too many points. You had a good week, though, going 3 and 1. Yeah, not a bad week at all. But to your point about Notre Dame, I think they've outscored opponents like 392 to like 90 something in their last four games, which is just insane. I know it's awesome. I love it. It's been highly enjoyable. And just one more week. Don't even need a blowout like that. Mm -hmm. Just need a win. And we get a home playoff game that I will certainly be attending. So I am. That would be awesome for you. I saw yeah. like the original like things were saying that it could have been Alabama at home, but it doesn't oh, seem yeah. like. Do you think that's still in the cards now that no. Alabama lost again? Yeah, yeah Alabama is so. done. Alabama is yeah. eliminated. I mean, there would have to be so much carnage for Alabama to sneak back into the playoffs, but they got blown out on the yeah. road by a bad Oklahoma team. And it's, I honestly felt like I was condemning them a bit when I put them into my big girthy parlay that I sent you. I know a couple others lost in that parlay, mm-hmm. but I literally put them in there. Like, man, I really hope, you know, just feel like I had some control over that, you know, yeah. I had some slight contribution to that loss, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, it's looking like it could be Indiana. Now it could be Texas could be one of those 10 and two sec teams. And Indiana would definitely be, 
Excellent That'd be a good for draw. Us. I mean, I feel like they're draw. a bit fraudulent, bro. I agree. I think that we would be able to beat them, especially at home for the battle of Indiana would be pretty right. epic. Uh, at if, least, you know. If AM beats Texas, though. So if AM beats Texas, then they would go to the SEC championship game. And if they were to lose that game, they would then have four losses. I don't think they would make the playoffs at all. So basically, Texas AM, in my opinion, is either the number two seed with a buy because they win the conference or they don't make it at all. There is no in between mm-hmm. for Texas A&M uh, at this point because of how many losses they've already racked up. The only reason that they can even make it into the conference championship game is because that Notre Dame loss was out of conference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, excited to see how it all plays out. Certainly yeah. uh, an exciting year for college football with the new 12 team playoff. Yeah, no, I'm super pumped for it. And on a side note, you know, since you are, you know, very close at home for this Texas Texas A&M game, I do want to say that Texas pretty much has already clinched the playoffs because if they lose against Texas A&M, they're 10 and 2, they're making it. If they beat Texas A&M, go on to lose to Georgia in the SEC Championship game, they're 11 and 2, they're still making it. So either yeah. way, either scenario, they've clinched. Obviously, they would like that bye, so they'd like to win out, but they're in a really good spot right now. Texas a and being at home, though, that's definitely a winnable game. But if you mm-hmm. win that one, you pretty much got to win the next one. Yeah, for sure. All right, moving on. Let's get on to our Week 13 picks here with some Thanksgiving games. Not a great slate, in my opinion, this year for Thanksgiving. Chicago at Detroit to lead things off. Because Detroit's at home, I don't give the Bears a chance just the way both teams have been playing. The Bears, a lot more competitive over the last couple of weeks, but they've been at home. I feel like that's a huge deal. I feel like when Detroit comes to town in a few weeks, it'll be more competitive, but I'm going to take Detroit here comfortably. Yeah, same with me. Bears did uh, hold their own against a decent Minnesota team last week, but you know ultimately couldn't hang on in overtime and uh, lost the game. And you know, regular Bears fashion, they always seem to let their fans down that way, but... Yeah, it's got to be Detroit this week, man. Their team has just been so electric. Totally agree. Giants at Dallas, another divisional rivalry here. Now, based on how Dallas played, Cooper Rush looking really good. Jaden Daniels and the Commanders kind of regressing back down to the mean. Really bothering me just because I almost feel like I've not picked a single Washington game correctly Mm -hmm. this year just because when they were good, I thought they would regress. And when they finally have regressed now, they've regressed against like bad teams. I mean, the Cowboys here, come on, you know, barely lost to the Steelers, kind of got thwarted by the Eagles. I really thought they performed better in those games. So I'm very upset with them and how they've been playing lately. But Dallas looking decent. Giants looking really bad. So I'm going to take Dallas here at home to get their first home victory of the year it's crazy that that's the sentence that just came out of your mouth the first home victory for the cowboys and it's week 13 bro that's unprecedented absolutely unprecedented for you know coming off of a season when they went undefeated at home except for that playoff game yeah i know craziness but yeah giants have looked really bad this year i know dallas has had their they're tough moments as well. Most of their season has been pretty tough. But yeah, really think that Dallas is going to be able to snatch a victory here from the Giants. And surprisingly to me, they're only favored by three and a half. And I don't know, I just feel like they'd be favored by a little bit more than that. Maybe like a touchdown or so. Yeah, and that was just, I feel like everyone still kind of remembers how Dallas played. You know, when they even had Dak, just not great. And the Giants, you know, maybe could get something going, even though they put Mm -hmm. in their third, fourth string quarterback. And that's why I'm going to take, though, Dallas minus three and a half this week in my best bets. But moving on here to probably the best game of the day, Miami at Green Bay. We've gotten this matchup a lot over the last few years just because of how things have worked out with them finishing in terms of, you know, seeding. And then now they just play Mm -hmm. the AFC east this year naturally and whenever miami has come up to green bay it's been ugly green bay should be able to win this game i think miami's been playing better but going on the road to a very cold environment just not going to it just doesn't spell out well for them here no it doesn't and originally i was thinking you know i kind of like miami here but then i checked the forecast and it's calling for snow in green bay exactly like you said Every time the the Dolphins play up in Buffalo and it's snowing, they get cooked. The winter is not 
the time for the Dolphins, especially not this week in Green Bay. So I'm also going to take the Packers. Good stuff. On the same page on Thursday now, on to Friday with the Black Friday game. I remember last year it was a shit game with the Jets and the Dolphins. Here is another shit game, Vegas at Kansas City. (laughs) Feel bad for Amazon. They get some tough ones here on Friday, but I don't know if I'll even watch. I mean, Friday, like Black Friday just feels like a weird day for football. Yeah. I hope it's a night game at least, but yeah, I guess actually it probably isn't a night game. Yeah, it's a 2 p.m. game just like it was last year. I'm going to take Kansas City. He was there to discuss. Vegas has looked competitive for parts of games, like competitive against the Dolphins until really the fourth quarter, competitive in the first half against the Broncos, a little fake punt action. But here at the Chiefs, I just don't think it's happening. Yeah, I don't think so either. They haven't looked all that great. I don't expect this will be like the the game last year where the Raiders beat the Chiefs. Um, although, to be fair, the Chiefs haven't looked great. They almost let up uh, a loss to the Panthers this past week. And, you know, yeah. they've got, I think they have the exact same record as the Raiders. So dangerous territory for sure for the chiefs but i mean yeah it definitely feels like they're the pick to win this game yeah 100 you no know, vegas was able to cover when they played at home now the 12 point mm-hmm. spread i don't even know if they're going to be able to cover that moving on here to sunday you got houston at jacksonville this is a tricky divisional game trevor lawrence possibly returning they're at home houston looking pretty bad the last couple of weeks They were able to beat up on Dallas, but really struggled against Tennessee. And that game was at home. That was a bad showing from them. CJ Stroud just not looking the same. However, I am going to take the Texans here. I'm going to take the Jags to cover, but I'm going to take the Texans to win. They really need this one. Otherwise, I mean, thank God they're in a bad division. I mean, if Mm -hmm. the... You know, Colts or the Jaguars were anywhere close to what they were last year. The Texans would not be able to win this division. But I think, I mean, they would still probably be in the driver's seat at six and six had they, you know, have they lose this game, you know. So I'm going to take them to win, but I don't feel great about it. Yeah, no, it's definitely wild that Houston lost last week to the Bozo Titans, who don't even seem to know how to play football very well. And yet they pull together a full four quarters very nicely to to beat the Texans there. I mean, the Texans beat the Bills at home and then they lose to the Titans, which just feels wild to me because the Bills are top five team in the league right now. So a little bit scary, a little bit concerning. Sophomore slump is kind of in a full effect for CJ right now, but I'm expecting him to bounce back a little bit this week and get a win over Jacksonville. Yeah, it really is in full effect. Jordan Love has kind of emerged as the better one in their sophomore year of starting. Indianapolis at New England. I'm pretty sure in the offseason, I predicted New England to win this game. I think I had it as maybe one of their only one or two wins. <laughs> I'm going to stick with it. I feel like they have a good chance here to get one from the Colts. They're at home. It's going to be cold. The Colts aren't going to like that. Anthony Richardson played well against the Texans. Then he goes and plays bad at home against the Lions when I really thought they had a chance to maybe even win that game. New England, though, Drake May, pretty solid, pretty consistent every game. You kind of know what you're going to get with him, whereas with Anthony, it really does vary week to week. I'm going to give the nod here to the Patriots. Pick them to win. Not a bad pick by any means, dude, Uh, but this is going to be the first one I differ with you on. I just think that the Colts have more to play for here. They've still got, albeit small, a chance for the playoffs here with the Texans only two games ahead of them. They could still make a little entry into the playoffs if the Texans keep playing poorly. So they need to win this game to keep their season alive. And I don't know. I just don't think that New England has quite as much to play for as the Colts. Yeah, no, they certainly don't. Probably would behoove them to lose games and improve that draft pick. Right. Chargers at Atlanta, what I believe to be the hardest game to pick this week. The Chargers coming off of lesser rest with that Monday night football game. Atlanta coming off of a bye, way more rest. They're at home. Both teams, though, usually play in really good weather. They're going to be in the dome here. Who do I pick? Atlanta kind of not been great lately. Chargers coming off of you know a win where they got lucky to win, and then they lost where they you know probably should have been more competitive. 
I'm going to take the Falcons at home for that very reason. Even though Chargers home advantage is not much at all, doesn't amount to anything. But I feel like the Falcons being here at home are able to get the win. I kind of like the under in this game. Both defenses, especially the Chargers, really solid. I like a lot of unders this week. Just feel like, you know, with the weather and then some of these defenses really coming out over the last couple of weeks. There are going to be some unders hitting, and I am going to roll with the Falcons here to get kind of back on track in that division. Yeah, no, definitely a solid pick here, and certainly was a tough game to pick, but I don't know. I, I feel like the Chargers have been a little bit more solid lately, really holding their own against a really solid team in Baltimore, and yeah, they didn't win, but they kept it pretty competitive like you mentioned and i just feel like they're the a little bit more consistent team than the falcons who seem to just win one and lose the next for no reason like a game that they should have won they just drop so i'm gonna have to pick the chargers here this week you know that's a totally valid pick i mean i'm just disappointed in them for how they let me down this past week i really yeah, thought I they'd be more competitive i thought they'd take advantage of the ravens poor pass defense more and they really couldn't Justin Herbert was not able to take advantage of that weakness. I feel like, and I'm just really surprised. I'm really shocked at how that game went last week. They jumped out to mm -hmm. a 10 point lead and it really just didn't come out to anything at all. One point to note here though, Justin Herbert, only one interception on the year and Kirk has nine picks, bro. I know. I know. And turnovers I know. make a huge I difference. But I'm pretty sure Kirk has way more total touchdowns than Justin. He has 17 touchdowns and Herb has 13. So quite okay. a couple yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Substantial. All right. Moving on here. Seattle at the Jets. Oh my God. Why am I taking the Jets again? What am I doing? Hey, the mm. Jets are coming off of a bye. They're at home. The weather's going to probably be gross. We all know how it is at this time of year in East Rutherford and Seattle, a very very up and down team this year after that 3 and 0 start they've kind of alternated wins and losses they got a surprising one at least for me at home against the cardinals i feel like now they kind of switch it up go on the road and take a loss certainly a fair pick but i don't know the jets have been too inconsistent for my liking every time I don't know. It feels like every time you pick them, they lose. So I should just pick the opposite. <laughs> yeah, you should fade me for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I have to, bro. So I'm going to take Seattle here this week. I know they're not at home, and home is really the place that they thrive, but they're still fighting for that division right now, bro, and they need to get this win. Yeah, no, they definitely are still alive in that division after beating uh, the Cardinals. That was huge for them, and the Niners just really falling Lost, off of a yeah. cliff. Yeah. And the Rams losing as well, which was also mm -hmm. huge because the Rams beat them. Yeah. Moving on here, Tennessee at Washington. An interesting game now with Tennessee playing better, the Commanders playing worse. I mean, Will Levis has been playing a lot better, way more accurate. The yards per attempt has been awesome. He's had some really good deep passes. Do they have a chance here at Washington? I don't think so. I love the under in this game. I'm going to take the Commanders, but I really think it'll be closer than a lot of people think. And yeah, Vegas kind of knows that. I mean, that five and a half point spread, a lot of people would call crazy a few weeks ago when the Commanders mm -hmm. were seven and two, when Tennessee only had two wins. And now things yeah. are just looking a little bit different. I know it's wild that the Commanders have dropped three straight. Just a few weeks back, everyone was talking about how Jaden Daniels is the top fantasy QB for the rest of the year. And that has certainly fallen short. We've I, mean, I think he was still quarterback one this past was, week. Was he really? I mean, I'm pretty sure he had an absolute phenomenal week. Well, was... I think he did he have like 34. But like in terms of uh, like what some of the ESPN analysts have been saying, yeah. they've been talking about how Bo Nix has been the sort of the one that they have deemed yeah. to be the best. Uh, he was QB, QB <laughs> of the year. Well, no, yeah, Nix has definitely been steadier and he has gotten better, whereas Jaden has kind of fallen off. But yeah, Bo has been really solid over the last few weeks as well. But yeah, Jaden mm -hmm. did somehow manage to get up to that number one QB spot. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty spooky. But yeah, certainly a tough game to pick here because Tennessee getting a dub over Houston was very unexpected. And with Washington also kind of regressing here, it makes for a very interesting game. But I still got to put my trust and confidence in Washington here. Feels like this is a week where they break that sort of uh, losing streak. 
Tennessee is the slump buster for Washington, you know? I mean, I hope so, because if they lose another game where I pick them, I'm going to be absolutely irate. (laughs) Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, another one where I don't know why I'm picking the Bengals here. The Bengals coming off of a bye. Pittsburgh coming off a couple extra days of rest after that Thursday night football loss. It feels like I should take the Steelers here. But because the Bengals are at home, I'm going to take them. Yeah, dude, I, I like the pick. I'm going to be taking them as well. I mean, they, they're they just due for a win at this point, like a, similar to some other teams where they would just behoove them to lose and get some better draft capital. But they are just due for a win. And I'm I'm just sick of seeing the Bengals lose all these games, bro. Seven losses this year, and like half of them, they shouldn't have even lost. Maybe more than that. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, they're they've all like to... one-score games. Yeah. It's crazy. So they've, they've got to get this win here over Pittsburgh. God, I hope so. I hope so. All right, Arizona at Minnesota. This one's also a little tough to pick. I'm just going to default to the home team. Arizona looked horrible last week. Kyler Murray, a very inconsistent, kind of Kirk Cousin-esque player where he goes out, has a ton of production, then he goes out mm-hmm. and then has a pick six and has a bunch of turnovers. Sam Darnold's kind of been that way as well. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, he had three interceptions. Now he has like 330 yards and a couple of touchdowns against the Bears. Mm-hmm. I am going to take the Vikings because they're at home here, but this should be a very tight, close game. Yeah, I'm taking the Vikings here as well. I, I always have a lot of difficulty picking the teams when they just absolutely just don't even show up to play like the Cardinals did last week in Seattle. Only not even putting up a full seven points is just embarrassingly bad to me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I can't put any faith in them to come into Minnesota and, and beat them when Minnesota has had a good offense for a large majority of this season. Yeah. They're going to have to earn my trust back after that absolute stinky, performance they put up against seattle yeah rams at new orleans we got this matchup last year the rams kind of ran away with it i remember but now new orleans is at home and i am going to take them the rams another team that has to prove it to me i mean they go out you know get stomped by the dolphins they get stomped by the eagles sure they were able to beat the patriots over the last three games stretch there but i don't really trust them here on the road at new orleans i mean just offensively not as electric as I thought they would be, especially in that game against the Vikings when they got Puka and Cup back. And also, Mm -hmm. their defense has been dog water. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I was about to say, is like they originally, I thought they'd be so elite when they had their weapons come back from injury. And now that's absolutely not the case. They haven't been all that great. And they're losing games that being said, they're still competitive in their division. They're only one game behind the, the lead in the division here. So this game has a lot of implications for them. But I feel more confident betting on New Orleans here, who's looked much better in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, I know. With Derek Carr being back, Chris Olave yeah. maybe being back as well. I definitely think that's the right pick. Tampa Bay at Carolina. I'm going to take the Panthers. I'm proud of it. They played a lot better over the last few weeks. They've won a couple back-to-back games, almost taking the Chiefs to overtime there. That was really impressive. Bryce Young looking the best he's ever looked. So I'm going to take him here at home. This is going to be an ugly, low-scoring, close game. I feel like Baker Mayfield has a turnover or two in this one. Panthers are really good. You know They can pick you off. Their defense is not as bad as you think. I mean, they just hung in there against the Chiefs. So I like them here to beat the Bucs in, in their division game. This is a really bold pick from you, dude. I don't know if I've ever seen you pick the Panthers once since we started recording this pot. Oh, I picked them to beat them. Remember when uh, they put Andy Dalton in against the Raiders? Oh, and, yes. Yeah. You did. So one time in the last I two know. years. That's yeah. really bold, dude. Bryce only mm-hmm. has five tuds on the year, and Baker's got 24. Hey, well... Just look over the last couple of games, though. Bryce has been right up there in terms of numbers with Baker. No, that's fair. That's fair. He did hold his own against the Chiefs, which is certainly something to be proud of. But I can't bring myself to pick them over the Buccaneers here. Buccaneers have played solid this whole season. Their offense has been great. 
There have been a few games that have been iffy performances, but for the most part, it's been very solid offensive play. I like the Bucks in this one. I really think the Bucks get held under 20 points in this game. This feels like a 23-20 type of game or maybe even like a 2017 type of game to me. Wow, that's that's super bold, dude. I'd be really surprised if that happened. This should be one of your best bets, though. It could get you back into, oh, it back is. into the game with a plus 215. Oh, this is one of your best bets, Carolina money line. Oh, I thought you meant the just spread. You know what? I'll do them on the money line. Why the hell not? Carolina plus 215, plus bro, to make two units. I would love that. I'm going to take the under. I'm going to take Carolina plus six as well. I do like your, it. your projections of many unders this week because the weather is looking do, nasty yeah. for many places. Even in the Chargers Atlanta game in the dome, I feel like it's just gonna go under. There's just some matchups this week that scream under to me. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on here. We got Philadelphia at Baltimore. Really good matchup here. This is, I guess, the game of the week, the 3 30 Eastern or no central game. And I'm gonna take Baltimore. I mean, again, I always come back to the stat. The only game that Lamar Jackson has lost against the NFC was the Daniel Jones and the Giants. I do not anticipate him losing at home, especially to an NFC team anytime soon. The time mm-hmm. that happens, I mean, that is a huge deal to beat Lamar Jackson if you're not from his conference and you don't see him that often. So I'm going to take the Ravens here, and it really does feel like one of the better bets on the week. For sure, yeah. And, I mean, Lamar will never lose another game to Daniel Jones in the in the Giants now that he is gonzo but um in any case i will be i will also be taking the ravens here but i thought that this one was one of the hardest games to to pick this week bro besides the the chargers and the falcons one but philadelphia has been really solid lately and they've been they've still got a better record than baltimore they've been playing really well and this game's going to be really competitive, but I feel like it's also going to be very high scoring. I could see this one being like a 34-31 type of game here. I'm going to take Baltimore, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to the Eagles. It's possible, but they're calling for snow in this one here as well. Yeah. It's going to be, I hope, a lot of snow games abound. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, should be a good one. And then another really good one here. Well, it would have been better. And I hope Brock Purdy starts, but... San Fran at Buffalo. Got to roll with Buffalo. They're at home here. They're coming off of a bye. They just beat the Chiefs. They're feeling good. And San Fran probably just out of it at this point. I don't expect them to make any late season push. I think they're just Mm -hmm. going to kind of look toward next year. They're going to have to pay Block Purdy at some point, probably in the offseason. Hopefully they don't pay him all that much so that they can have room in the cap for other players to stack around them. Just mm-hmm. feel like this year is kind of shot in the ass for them. Even if Brock Purdy starts, I'm taking the Bills. Yeah, I'm also going to take the Bills. Feels like the obvious pick here with the way they've been playing, as well as the poorness with which the 49ers have been playing. But I will say they're not entirely out of it, bro. They're only one game back from the division. They've still got a That's chance. True. They could still make a late season push. I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility, but. I'm still taking Buffalo here. It would be tough for the 49ers to make a playoff push. Yeah, I mean, they got a tough remaining schedule as well. They got, you know, some more of those divisional games, which Mm -hmm. they've lost, you know, the Rams already. They've lost the Cardinals already. So they got a mountain to climb just to get ahead of those teams in terms of tie break scenarios. And lastly, Monday Night Football, Cleveland at Denver. Feels like an easy one, but it never is. I'm going to roll with Denver nonetheless. Cleveland coming off those extra days of rest. Is Denver due for a regression here? I mean, they've been absolutely rolling teams ever since that Chiefs kind of fluky loss in which they really should have won. That would have made things really mm-hmm. interesting in the AFC West. Cleveland, you know, we all know what they did to the Steelers this past week. Super impressive in the snow there at home. But now going on the road to Denver, Cole, Jameis doesn't like the cold. That was the coldest game that Jameis Winston has ever started in his entire career. Here's going to be Mm -hmm. another cold one. Now it's not at home. That just is icky. That doesn't feel good. They're going to lose this one. Yeah, no, I love the pick, dude. I'm hammering the Broncos here. They've been hot lately. The Chiefs' loss was such a fluke. 
they should have won that game as well. I mean, they've just really been on fire. You got to ride the hot hand with Bo Nix, dude. I'm taking the Broncos easily this week. Good stuff. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if they cover. I'm not going to touch that spread, but I do like them to win here. Now, some best bets. Just a few best bets this week for you guys. Miami, Green Bay, <laughs> under 47 and a half. We already talked about the snow potential. I like Green Bay minus three. I would prefer two and a half, so bite it down if you can. But hey, even if they win by a field goal, it is a refund. Dallas, minus three and a half. That line's gone down. It was originally four. I love it at three and a half. New York, Dallas over 37 and a half. It feels like they want points. It's Thanksgiving. It's Turkey Day. They want this to be exciting. It's in a dome. It's going to be fine. It's going to be good weather. I like the over there. Kansas City minus 12. Hey, Vegas covered in the first meeting. I think Chiefs cover in this meeting. College football time. Now, some of these games are Thursday. Some of these games are Friday, not just Saturday. College football is all week this week. I'm taking Memphis plus 14 at Tulane, two of the best group of five teams going at it. Then a typical classic Big Ten matchup, Minnesota, Wisconsin, under 43 and a half, those Big Ten games. Some of the recent ones have gone over like that wisconsin Nebraska one, which I did actually call the over in that one, but now I'm going to take the under. Mississippi State plus 27. That line actually went up against Ole Miss on, I think they're on the road, but this is a rivalry game. This is the Egg Bowl. Ole Miss is coming off that loss to Florida. Are they upset? Are they mad? You know, they very well could be, but this is a rivalry game, and that's a lot of points to give to Mississippi State, who has been kind of a cover monster in some of these bigger games. Stanford. Plus three, I like that. I think they're playing San Jose State. That's a group of five team. That's a little disrespectful to Stanford. Nebraska, Iowa, over 39 and a half. This game always, always goes under. Hey, well, this year I think it goes over. Georgia Tech, plus 19 and a half at Georgia. Utah, UCF, over 49. Utah has been scoring a lot more. I think they can help you know UCF get to that over. South Carolina, plus two and a half at Clemson. The money line would not be a bad bet here either. Louisville, minus three and a half. Don't remember who they're playing, but... Take a minus three and a half. Tennessee Vanderbilt under 48 and a half. I absolutely adore the under in this game. Tennessee's defense is so good. I don't think Tennessee gets over 24 points in this game themselves. Ohio State minus 20 and a half against Michigan. It is an absolute pounding for Michigan. Michigan is going to wish that they didn't even show up to this one. They've won the last three years in a row. Now their team is dog water. It's going to get ugly. I also like the over 43 and a half. Syracuse plus Plus 11 at home against Miami. Auburn, Alabama under 52. Now, I don't like the spread in this game. Auburn coming off of a big win. Bama coming off of a big loss. So I don't touch the spread, but I like the under. Maryland plus 24 and a half against Penn State. That's a rivalry game. Florida minus 15 against Florida State. They are going to murder Florida State. Florida State is one of the worst teams in the power conferences this year. Then, Massive rivalry game. You got Connecticut at Massachusetts. I like the over in this game. Both teams very capable of scoring. Very underrated Massachusetts team, by the way. West Virginia plus three and a half. They've been so good this year. They are always undervalued. They are always underdogs. And that is just, yeah, they made me probably some of the most money all year. Atlanta plus 110 money line. We already talked about Pittsburgh plus three. Hey, they very well could win this game. Let's take them on the points. Jacksonville plus five talked about that. Then the unders in Tennessee, Washington, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Indianapolis, New England, Chargers, Atlanta, Cleveland, Denver. I love all those unders, no matter what the number is at. Houston, Jacksonville, and Seattle, New York Jets. I like the overs, so that's 43 and 41 and a half, respectively. And then a couple money line underdogs, New England plus 130, Carolina plus 215. You talked me into it. Carolina also plus six. I also like New Orleans, my line plus 110. And finally, I know that was a little more than a few, but Baltimore minus two and a half if you can get them at that number against the Eagles and Buffalo minus seven against the Niners. Dude. An absurd slate of best bets this week. I feel good about a lot of those, dude. There's some <laughs> I feel better about than others, but like that's that's my best work right there. 39. I think that is the most you've ever delivered 
All I'm at, I want 25 and 20, uh, what would it be? 25, 25 and, and 14. Well, that would be, that would be a little, no, much. Okay. that's asking a lot. <laughs> at just 20, 20 would be impressive. You'd be at a positive hit rate. I want 21. I'm on 21? 21. Yeah. Okay. 21 and Carolina money line has to hit. Yeah. Yeah. If Carolina money line hits, <laughs> we can, we can settle for 20. Yeah. Okay. All right, good, good. Well, I don't nearly have as many bets as you. Only about twelve percent of what you delivered, but you should have got, to match me in terms of bets. No, there's no way I couldn't <laughs> do it. Detroit minus ten here, bro. I've been riding Detroit to cover the spread yeah. like every week for the past like five weeks, and you have. they've just been hitting for me. So I'm going to keep riding until it doesn't. Dallas minus three and a half here against the Giants. Dallas is at home here. Giants not been playing well at all. I like Dallas to win probably by more than a touchdown here. Then you've got Vegas plus 12 and a half against the Chiefs. The Chiefs haven't blown out any teams really this whole year. I don't know why Vegas would be any different. Mm. Going to take them to cover the spread. Then you've got the Chargers minus two here, like them over Atlanta. And then finally, Buffalo minus seven. We just watched Green Bay absolutely beat down on the Niners. I expect Buffalo will do the same. So we have two opposite bets in there with Vegas oh. and Chargers. Oh, that's a little bit scary. That is a little bit scary. But I like your Buffalo. I like your Dallas bet. I just I would not touch the Detroit one because they have been so good. They are due for a little bit of a down week. I think they still win, but I mean, it's a divisional game. Those just always concern me when the spread's that big. They just cover for me every week, bro. I've I've bet them three times so far this year, and they've covered every time. It's been great. They've covered already minus 11 and a half for me, minus 13, and minus 7 and a half. The thing is, that just can't keep up. Why? Army That's did it like this whole season, bro. Yeah, well, and now it's bad. Now well, now <laughs> Army's in the trenches, bro. I think Army could have a very, very distasteful end to their season. They could lose to Tulane in the American Championship. Then they can go ahead and lose to Navy in that rivalry game. And that yeah. would complete the circle of law of averages for you. I mean, it could, but they could also still make the playoff, bro. It's it's possible. In order to make the playoff, they would have to have Boise State lose to some crap Mountain West team and then lose in the Mountain West Championship. They would need a lot to happen. But, but it's still and, possible. Well, see, the green wave of two lanes also coming down their throat right now. Well, in a week they will be, which is not yeah. an easy challenge at all. Right. Plus, they just got absolutely pants on national television by Notre Dame. No, they did, bro. They did. I'm not saying, I'm not advocating for Army to be in the playoff. I'm just saying it's it's possible. I just hope they're better at what they're going to school there for than at football. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got some fan mail here. Do we? Jimbo sent in his picks early. Both. So last week, nine and four, bringing okay. his record to 110 Good. and 69. Same as nice. you. There we go. Then we've got his new picks here, Lions, Cowboys, Dolphins, Chiefs, Texans, Colts, Chargers, Jets, Titans, Bengals, Vikings, Rams, Bucks, Eagles, Bills, and Browns. So he agrees with you on the Jets, which is a little bit spooky to me. See, the thing is with you can't have two homer picks now just because Jameis <laughs> is on a different team. Like when Jameis was on the Bucks, like I accept, like it's fine. Like you could take the Bucks every week, but now because he's on a, a different team, you can't yeah. pick the Bucks and the team that Jameis is on every week. That's no, he takes the Browns every issue. week, though. I, I know that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like you can't do that now. Like that, that's going to. I mean, again, they worked this past week, but I agreed with that pick. Now I don't think this is the right side to be on. Yeah, no, it, it has worked for him, though. What was the other game that it worked for him? Like the first time that Jameis was starting and he picked the Browns. Wasn't it like against the Ravens, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that was a good pick. I will give it to him. But hey, those yeah. are divisional games. This one's a little bit different than that. I will say Jameis is pretty entertaining. I mean, he was like throwing mm-hmm. snowballs at people at the end of that <laughs> game. It was pretty. It was I, I like Jameis a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um. Yeah, and then my dad's performance here. 
I think this might have been his first losing record of the season here, six and seven. Damn. Well, good thing you didn't send road. those in advance. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he <laughs> he he knew better than to deliver the early picks last week because he knew they'd be rocky road. Wow. But he picked the Bears. That must have been very heartbreaking then to see the Bears almost pulled off. I know. Yeah, and same with the Chargers. Special Chargers. Yeah, his, his upset specials. Wow, yeah, I would have agreed with that one for sure, but yeah, they yeah, just couldn't well, pull it off. They couldn't close we'll, it out. We'll see if he has any other upset specials this week, the way that you have your, your Carolina Moneyline upset special. Some retrospective upset specials. Yeah, exactly. But his picks aren't on time, though, so I know it doesn't really Sad. count. Yeah. Pain. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for you for this episode of the Sideline Sorcerers. And we will be back post Turkey Day, as in like next week, with mm-hmm. yeah, our bellies full and hopefully some more good picks. Of See course. you guys.